Two years ago, I lost my husband, Dave, unexpectedly, which is an unimaginable thing to live through. It felt like I was sucked into a void, like I couldn't quite breathe or think. I didn't think I was going to get through it. And I was even more worried about getting my children through it. I could barely get through it myself, let alone get my two children through this. We can't control what happens to us. But we do have some influence over how we respond to the events and hardships in our lives. What Adam gave me were specific things I could do. We wanted to write a book that would combine her insights with the best evidence, but also with other people's stories. Becoming Paralyzed was not something it was written on my uh, week at a glance, you know? On my 18th birthday, I was sent to prison. Sexual abuse led to wanting to end my life. When my mom was waked out on drugs, you know, I was pretty much raising my brothers and sisters. We all face challenges, and some of them are big and huge and traumatic. And some of them are the daily challenges, but we need resilience for all of it. Resilience is not a fixed personality trait. It's a lifelong project. A few weeks after Dave died, there was a father-son activity. Our friend Phil and I were talking about who should do it. I said, okay, well, that's good, but like, I want Dave. I want Dave to go with our son. And he said, option A is not available, so let's just kick the shit out of option B. When you don't have an option, when it's totally taken away from you forever, you go to option B. I discovered what many, many people discovered. You have a lot more grit than you think you do. I've got nothing to lose in trying to live the biggest life I can. <laughs> Asking for help is not a sign of weakness. It is a sign of strength to understand when you need help. In some way, we're all living option B. And the idea is how do we make the very most of it?